name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. In the Apostles' Fast, we um, talked about salvation and we started with the theme of the early church and, and the theme was that the Lord was adding many people to the church daily who were being saved. And we talked about that we are being saved, that we have, we have been saved when we received our baptism and believed in the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord. And also we are being saved throughout our life, through our actions, through our choices, through our daily commitment to God. And, and then we will be saved at the final day when we meet the Lord face to face and we will be saved and will be in eternal life with God. Today, we started with a good thing, a good, um, nice message that um, we need to be, go back to be like children. Unless you are converted and be become as little children you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. But towards the end of the gospel, it became kind of really challenging, right? That if your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It's better for you to enter into life lame or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the everlasting fire. Kind of, it is, it, it is really challenging. One of the early church fathers really did it. <laughs> he plucked out uh, his uh, eyes when he looked uh, lustfully at a woman. Although he took it literally, but still, it is really challenging to imagine that if my hand or foot or my eyes or my tongue are causing me to not be with God. We know the sins of the tongue, of the eyes, of the flesh. And we have a choice. If, if this hand or eye or tongue will keep you from the kingdom of in heaven, cut it off because it is better for you to be living with God less one eye or less one tongue, than to be a whole person but away from the Lord. It is really graphic, right? <laughs> Especially these days. But imagine that the story or the, the, the gospel today started by you need to go back and become like little children. So many little children here or youth so imagine that when PS5 came out, like maybe what, like seven, eight months, right? Or one year? Two years? Wow, well, I'm, uh, I'm too dated. PS5 came out two years, okay? And you really want it. And you told your parents, please, 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 I will do anything. I'm going to give up anything you tell me. Just get me this PS5. And they believe you, and they tell you, okay, give up. Give me an example here. Chris, do you have an example? Give up what? What? Give up your phone for a month, and then I'll get you the PS5, okay? So, any other examples here? Anything that you gave up for Xbox or PS5? Guys, come on, I know. What did you give up? What's that? TV? Okay, that's easy. <laughs> it's not easy, I, I know. So hard with Netflix these days. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, give up TV time, give up your phone, and I'll get you the PS5. If you look at it, it is the same way. A childlike mindset, 
willing to give up anything, even if it's a hand or foot or tongue, because I need to be saved. I want to be saved. Nothing else is more important than to be saved. And this is how it started that unless you go back and become like little children, children have this sense of urgency, right? It is all or none thinking, right? All or none, us parents know that. It is either black or white. There is no compromise. If I, want, if I want my PS5, I'm gonna give up anything, I'm gonna promise my parents I will behave, I will, I will get good grades, I will do anything to get that prize. The same. Don't get stuck with the graphic uh, description of eye or foot, but what are you willing to give up for the greatest prize of your entire life. We all go to school, we all want to achieve our career goals, and when we have a, uh, um, a very important exam or a board exam, we give up anything, we disappear from the world, we cut all connections with people and we just focus because this exam is the most important exam in my life and my career depends on it. We set our priorities because it is really important. So the question here today for you and me, as adults, as youth, as children, what are we willing to give up to enter the kingdom of God? What is your sense of urgency? The readings this morning give us some examples. Paul, of course, when he was called by Christ, he said that for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. Many of us are people pleasers, right? We need to please people around us. We need to seek their approval. And in order to get their approval, we give up some values. We give up some standards. But here it is like, the heart and the mindset of a child. It is all or none, black or white. If I please people, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. It's a choice, either or. What are you willing, again, to give up? Maybe many of us are not struggling with their eyes or their hand or their feet, but there is a common struggle. It is the tongue. The tongue that we use to praise God, we use it to shame people. The tongue we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, the same tongue I can defame some people who are the children of God. Are you willing to give up that to get the greatest prize of your life? Are you consciously every day going out, starting your day, and deciding what I'm gonna give up today? If you're, again, struggling with your tongue, struggling with your eyes, with your thoughts, whatever you are struggling with, are you willing to give it up or not? It seems hard, and yes, it is hard. Our daily struggle to become one with God, to grow in the spirit, it is hard. But we forget that you are not alone. You have the grace of God every day in your life. And with this, I will tell you a few verses that are encouraging. Because we think it is my effort, it is my work. And yes, I offer my work. But without the grace of God, I can do nothing. 
in Ephesians 3, verse 20, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. بالعربي والقادر أن يفعل فوق كل شيء أكثر جدا مما نطلب أو نفتكر بحسب القوة التي تعمل فينا. When you try to give up anything, you are empowered by the grace, by the power of God who is able to do for you more abundantly beyond your imagination. Just decide, just go back to this heart and mind of a child. How bad do you want to be saved? How bad do you want it? And this will help you set your priorities. This will help you go about your day knowing you have only one goal. is to be the image of Christ in that day. Christ went around people doing good. Christ looked at people with compassion. Christ thought no evil of people. Christ did not gossip. Christ did not shame. Christ did not lie. And you know all the list. This is our calling. This is your calling. Yes. We say it a lot, get the highest grade, get the, the career that you like, be as successful as you, as you can be, fulfill your potential. But the greatest of all, the, re, the only thing that really matters that will stay with you, not only in this life, is your soul. Make sure your soul is safe because what gain is it for any person to um, profit, the entire world and loses their soul. We spend all our life trying to gain and profit from the entire world. And yes, again, live your potential, be as uh, successful, fulfilled as you want. But in the process, after you have achieved everything, do not lose your soul. Really, do not lose your soul. We only remember the, the good that people did in their funerals, right? <laughs> when we have a funeral, we remember the good that this person did. And yes, we should. But how about if you go every day and you want, by the end of this day, your co-workers, your spouse, your children, talk good about you as well. Leaving a good memory, a good name, after the end of every day. Don't wait until your funeral, the people say, ah, oh, he was a good person. Make sure, with the grace of God, that at the end of every day, most people, because you can't please uh, everyone, but many people who will say, this is a good woman, this is a good man. They touched me today, they helped me today. They spoke good when they had the choice to speak evil. Leave a good memory every day that passes from your life. I'll remind you of the verse again, whenever you feel um, uh, it's hard, it is difficult. In Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. He is working in you. To him all glory forever. Amen.